Hi, good morning. And uh, this is the news review on the AM show. And good morning to you, anyone. Good morning, Israel. How are you? I'm well. How about you? I'm very good. It's always good to see you in the mornings. Yeah, yeah. Same here. And today you're doing the daily graphic. Yes, I am. Um, so it's 6.35 and I'm going to start the daily graphic this morning. Okay. I'm just trying to finish my chocolates. Um, front page of the daily graphic. BOG steps up fights against electronic fraud, um, supports COVID-19 vaccination efforts, Dr. Awal and treats world tourism body. Implementing the RTI law, information access fees will be out soon. That's according to um, Kojo Pong Kuma, Minister for Information. Now he says that the government is developing a standardized fee um, system for all public institutions to charge people seeking access to information under the right to information law. Okay, so we'll find out about that um, pretty soon. Now, apparently there's a controversy over at the fees. Act 989, which was passed in 2019 and came into force in 2020, helps people have access to information. Currently, there is no standardized fee system, which means that public institutions are using their discretion to peg their fees. And um, this will be reviewed by the RTI Commission. In July this year, the Minerals Commission charged the fourth estate, an online news portal, 6,000 Ghana CDs as access to information. So interesting. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So after the 6,000 CD thing, the fourth estate petitioned the RTI Commission and they annulled the 6,000 CD um, fee and ordered the Mineral Commissions to charge the fourth estate two Ghana CDs. For the <laughs> okay, that's quite interesting. Well, I'm sure, yes, if there is, you know, a standardized um, fee system, it will make everything easier. Land reclamation, a step in right direction. Now, the government has signaled that it will roll out a re reclamation projects that will provide jobs for the youth and also reclaim lands that were destroyed by illegal small-scale mining. So good stuff there. Okay. Oh, there's the R. Kelly story on page nine. Um, R. Kelly has been found guilty of sex trafficking. He could face life. There were nine counts against him, and he was found guilty for all of them. So, um, and in London, the UK army is on standby to ease the fuel crisis. Okay, Elizabeth O'Henry is asking this morning, should we do a miracle? Um, and <laughs> that's interesting. Um, health, advanced prostate cancer results in castration which is why you should get um, your prostate checked ASAP, especially if you're over 40. BOG steps up fight against electronic fraud. So a centralized cybersecurity system has been set up by the Bank of Ghana as part of its enhanced effort to deal with electronic fraud and cyber risks in the banking sector, especially after um, that guy last week who had it was a 600 and something ATM card. Yeah, it's 56 ATM cards. Yeah. Okay, so Eugene Ahin, yesterday um, he was on the news um, talking about the presidential judge situation. He says that government begins process for new presidential jet. So the government has begun the process for the acquisition of a new jet for presidential travels. He said the new aircraft would be bigger than the current one. So the Minister of Defense has made it clear that the government has decided to buy a bigger jet to save us all from these troubles. Which troubles? Okujeto troubles. <laughs> the the Okujeto troubles. Because apart from those troubles, I don't really know what other yeah. troubles he's talking about. So yeah, okay, well, there's justification here. According to, so Mr. Nitiwo, who is the defense minister yeah. who will be buying the jet, um, the presidential jet could only carry 11 passengers, minus the crew, and it's often had to do undesirable refueling stops as unintended destination during long hauls, causing inconvenience to both the president and the host countries. So to avert such inconvenience, the use of a chartered private jet was critical. So the plane could carry more passengers and fly long distances without making stops to fuel. Why do we need more passengers? I was just going to say, I mean, everybody who is not the president can fly commercial a day or two ahead. 
And then the precedent, if you know that you have to stop five times to refuel. Well, go. not five times. It's usually one stop. I'm just being, I'm saying at, at the very worst. <laughs> like, go a little bit earlier. I don't know that we can afford or that we need. Yes, especially in a time where we're saying that COVID-19 has impacted the economy and uh, the economy. Yeah. So if we use COVID-19 as an excuse to say we can give um, civil servants more than 4% salary increase, I don't think it's justifiable to want to get a new jet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know how, how um, our governments are. They will do what they want to do regardless of what we say. So support COVID-19 vaccination efforts. Dr. Awal entreats World Tourism Body. Engineers are being urged to adhere to professional standards and activities to commemorate Family Planning Week underway. So the Ghana Health Service and its partners have launched activities marking this year's Family Planning Week. So <laughs> the theme is family planning in the midst of COVID-19. And it's interesting because I guess because of COVID-19, we're at home more. Yeah. Um, and people are a little bit more bored. Um, so they could get up to all sorts of family. Anyway, in Ghana, are people still home because of COVID-19? I doubt. I think yeah, there are still a few companies oh, if, that are doing the working from home. Oh, a few. I mean, but I mean... Schools are back in session. Everything People is are, open. Yeah, everything is, is basically. So, um, okay, five confirmed <clears throat> Cape Coast rejects candidates, and obviously that's, that has to do with the MMDCEs. Um, BOG steps. Okay, that that um, story continues here. Okay, is it just today? It kind of looks like um, the Daily Graphic is not too bulky today. ECOWAS must fight illicit small arms. That's according to Dr. Adamu. Um, the Programs Officer of the Disarmament and Arms Control of the Economic Community of West African States Commission, Dr. Sani Adamu, is urging the sub-regional body to effectively fight the war against illicit flow and proliferation of small arms and light weapons. And I think we've talked about that um, so many times. That sometimes you hear of some crime being committed and you wonder how pe these people got guns and stuff, you know? So, okay, top international engineering wins 8 million arbitration award. Organized labor urged to resolve salary issues. Salary issues cannot be resolved amicably. Just pay the salary. Like, there's <laughs> nothing to be resolved. There's no conversation to add. Like, let's let the money hit the account. Sustainable funding needed for sports growth. And um, on the back page, $100 million Kumasi Industrial City Project starts in October. An information portal on child marriage has been launched. That's it for the Daily Guide in the sorry Ghanaian Daily Graphic in eight minutes. Okay, right. So let's move to the Ghanaian Times now. And on the front page, disaster hits Kumasi six perish in floods after torrential rains. And in the news, uh, how many did uh, we report were how many did we say were 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 dead in the floods? Four. Kumasi. Okay. So mm, yeah. Four. The Ghanaian Times is reporting six, uh, six, six persons, including two minors, have been confirmed dead following Monday's downpour that resulted in flooding of parts of the Kumasi metropolis and environs. The deaths occurred at Ahinema, Kokobeng, Sokobang, Dabang, Penyi, and Kumasi. And uh, so throwing some light on the incident, he said at Ahinema, Kokobeng, a driver in charge of a Kia truck defied the odds and drove through the flooded road between Ahima Kokobing and Yinim. Nana Kodia said three young men, Nana Kodia, by the way, is the NADMO, uh, Ashanti Regional Administrator for NADMO. Nana Kodia said three young men on board the truck fell off the vehicle and were carried away by the floods. So, yes, I mean, it's, the road is flooded. You just have to stop. Don't Attempt to be, uh, I don't know, but yes, unfortunately, three people have lost their lives as a result of someone deciding that he was too brave. Policeman remanded for allegedly freeing convicted woman after sex. That story keeps coming up. And so the policeman well, tells the woman that I'm going to have sex with you. And then I'll, and let, then, you and then I'll let you go. Wow. And the woman also believed that, yes, yes. that's possible. Yes. The policeman can't free if, being con if, if you've been convicted. If he could, yeah. All right, Tadip, even if the woman, I mean, the policeman let you go, you'd eventually you be, be caught. Yeah, 
Yeah. Daddy pregnant woman fails to meet bail conditions. So Josephine paying men's and 28 alleged pregnant and kidnapped woman is still in the Takradi Central Police Cells in the Western region because she could not fulfill her bail conditions. Yeah, 50K, and shut down But you know, you don't really need to come up with the money. You're not okay. supposed to pay. Somebody is supposed to just standing. And sh but show that they can pay. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need to. But you need to know somebody who has 50,000 CDs. But the, the people get the, the perception out there is that if they say 50,000, they have to go and look for the money. Yeah. And uh, present that. But, but Israel, bail, bail is free. But the thing is, again, how many people in, you know, at her, you know, whatever, know people who can prove that they have 50,000 Ghana CDs? Okay. You, how many people do you know who have 50,000? A lot. Me. You. Not a lot. Okay, so how many people do I know have 50,000? I'm looking at one. Right? Very funny. But the truth is, you know, sometimes it's hard to come up with, you know, that kind of proof, depending on the circles that you're in. So. Anyway. All right, so let's ensure successful enforcement of RTI law. That's uh, the Information Minister Kujopon Kruma saying that Guinea Janta bars members from running in next elections, okay, which is good. So Guinea's Janta said on Monday, its members are barred from standing in the next national or local elections and that it will agree on the length of transition to elections with an 81-member transitional national council. So they've set that up. Okay, well, they're talking about it. They haven't indicated who or which people are going to occupy positions in the, tra the transitional government. Dozens dead after attacks in northeast Nigeria. South Sudan dismisses UN report on corruption. Merkel Air loses support as German parties meet. So apparently there's trouble in the camp of the uh, CDU following the party's abysmal showing in the German elections. North Korea fires missiles. Top U.S. general faces tough questions on Afghanistan. 103 million rural electrification project for 582 communities launched. So if uh, you're in a community that doesn't have electricity, you know, you may be on this list. And action on security issues in Middle East. Africa dominates last day of UN general debate. That's on page nine. Don't drag military into partisan, partisan politics. Ghana Armed Forces advises. So the Ghana Armed Forces has entreated Ghanaians, including politicians, not to drag the Ghana Armed Forces into partisan politics. Our mandate has captured in the 1992 constitution is to defend the territorial integrity of Ghana and we should be allowed to focus on our mandate. So this has to do with comments by the North Tongue MP Samuel Kujosha Blackwa, who's saying that there's some form of disquiet within the ranks of the Ghana Armed Forces, with President Dana Adudankwe Kufado's preference for luxurious aircraft operated by a foreign crew. Okay, so the Ghana Armed Forces says, no, 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 it's not true. Caught, and the Ghana Armed Forces is also cautioning legal miners, their days are numbered. And um, moving on, Parliament petition to look into election 2020 outcome. And then on page 12, MPP top notch member defects to NDC. Ishmael Ashite familiarizes with MPP registration exercise. And then recurring political violence fueled by youth unemployment. That's an assembly member saying that. And program to provide SHS with solar energy launched in Keta. And um, on page 15, presidency dismisses claims some MMDC nominees not shortlisted. Go to the center spread. We'll end shortcuts in procurement at MDAs. More MMDC nominees get not. And then public cautioned against household visits on pretext of census. This is an interesting story. So apparently there are some people who are going to homes saying that they are there for the census. But the census is over. And the Ghana Statistical Service, in a statement issued in Accra yesterday, is saying that uh, the, the attention has been drawn to those impersonators who have ever seen some households claiming to be census officials. It says, 
According to the GSS, all official 2021 PHC paraphernalia for field officers, including the blue sensors T-shirts, blue sensors reflective jackets, white sensors caps, and identity cards used during the data collection for the sensors were no longer valid for official use. So essentially, the sensors, it's over. And that anybody who comes to your house and says that they're coming for the sensors, please dismiss them because it is not true. The census is over. Ghana Standards Authority vows to enforce standards in built environment. 40 Ghana Marine Police attend school. And uh, the story on high life music legend Nanam Pedu, Kwame Ampedu passing on is on page 23. I mean, it's, uh, it's sad to have one of these, our legends, go like that. But that's on page 23. 23, you can get some more from that. Committee begins review of 90-year-old Dagbon constitution. And uh, government grants relief package to rice farmers in KJB. Then on page 26, BOG purchases 280 kilograms of gold to show up exchange for reserves. So the Bank of Ghana has, been, has said that it's going to show up its... Uh, is gold reserves under the do domestic gold purchase program. And so with the 280 kilograms of gold bought so far, that's uh, more than half of the 540 kilograms the BOG projected to buy this year. So it's pretty much on course. COVID-19 pandemic has impacted negatively on tourism growth and uh, job. That's Dr. Awal saying that. I mean, certainly the tourism industry has been hit hard because of COVID-19, because people are not flying in to, you know, tourists. We're not getting as many tourists as, mm. yeah. And it's actually more, expense, more expensive now to travel. So if people who intend to travel find out that I need a lot more money or I, I need to do COVID tests and I feel my COVID tests and all of that, and I'm not sure about the country, and their uh, COVID situation. So I'm not going to go. Do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with, with, with the story. I'm just amazed that even though I did the daily graphic, you're still clocking almost nine minutes on the Ghanaian Times. But you didn't go into details. I mean, you, you just scratched the surface. You read some. Is there any story that you've done that I've repeated? OK, Israel. No. OK, but I'm almost coming to the end of it, actually. Okay. Champions Chelsea face Juventus in crunch tie. That's in the Champions League. And um, on the back page, Ghana Tourism Authority, Okre District Assembly, plant 500 seedlings to mark UN World Tourism Day. And no looming food shortage. That's a great minister. I'm done. Wow. Okay. It's 6.53. Have I repeated any you know, of the stories that you did? Okay, Israel. But um, I guess switching newspapers was not the solution. Um, so you can have your daily graphic back. And the daily graphic that you had is not as bulky as the one I tend to review. <laughs> wow. Okay. The daily guide this morning, how Baba Idi killed Kaka. And that's from the Ejra report. A two for OK's free zones boss move. As our pregnant woman fails to meet Bill and legendary Nana Ampedu dies, may his soul rest in peace. And thank you for years and years and years and years of great music. Great music. Yeah. Page five on the Daily Guide. Taliban outlaws barbers shaving or trimming beards. Wow. Barbers in Afghanistan's Helmand province have been banned by the Taliban from shaving or trimming beards. The order was issued on Monday and marks the latest in a series of restrictions placed on the country's residents based on the Taliban's strict interpretation of Islamic law. Biden picks Africa's COVID chief to head AIDS program. NATO patrols Kosovo Serbia border as tension saw and North Korea fires missile, says the South. Let me go straight to do some entertainment. DJ Sly makes history with Afrima Best African DJ nomination. Nollywood star um, Halima grabs a special award in Ghana, Halima Abubakar. Actress in leaked audio 
with Tonto Dike's ex-lover fights back. R. Kelly found guilty. Um, oh boy. Okay, um, that's about it for the entertainment um, bits. And um, there's a, there's a, a, what would you call this? There'll be a feature on. A feature? Yeah, a feature on um, the legendary Kwame Ampedu, veteran high life musician. Nana Kwame Ampedu, leader and founder of the African Brothers International Band, has died aged 76. He was called Pastel fondly and um, reportedly passed on yesterday at the Lagan Hospital in Accra. That's on page 14. If you'd like to take a minute to remember everything that he was. On the back page, England World Cup winner dies. Partey, Kudus return to face Zimbabwe. Messi must respect Mbappe. Oh, that's interesting. Mbappe is Paris Saint-Germain's number one attacker. And Lionel Messi needs to show the young Frenchman more respect, according to ex-Arsenal and Chelsea striker Nicolas Anelka. Messi was hailed as the best player in the world by PSG boss uh, Mauricio Pochettino on Monday. But Aneka believes that Messi, who arrived in the summer from Barcelona, must now play a role to serve Mbappe rather than be the centerpiece of the side. So he's been at the club for five years and Messi has to respect him. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, that's about it for the Daily Guide. Okay, let's, let's go to the Daily Dispatch. I'll just go through the headlines. Uh, Farijan comments on 10 of NDC's 30 proposals. And government to acquire a new and bigger aircraft, presidential aircraft. And the 10 recommendations of the Committee on Ejra Killings. And then on the BNNFT, BNFT, a while urges UN World Tourism Authority to help support COVID-19 vaccination efforts. Domestic borrowing causes high cost of lending. That's the Bank of Ghana governor. So domestic borrowing is uh, causing the cost of lending to go up. Let me read a bit of it. So governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Adesing, has said that the main reason for high lending rates in the country is largely due to government's huge borrowing from the domestic debt market to support the budget. Hence, any hope of affordable lending would depend on fiscal consolidation. Okay, so government, once again, is crowding out the um, businesses who would want to borrow. Because if government is borrowing, then most banks and most institutions and most individuals will want to give their money to government rather than businesses. And that doesn't help businesses. Okay, so that will be it for the newspapers I have. Yeah, I think um, we should probably go to my journal online. All right. Because um, we only have about two minutes on the clock. Okay, so the full video for Manassas and um, the fourth estate there. Licensed um, sex yeah, predator. It's out. The licensed sex predator. It's on My Joy Online. Um, okay, so other stories on My Joy Online. I'm a bad person and I need to die. The sex predator confesses as police arrest him. Her life legend Nana Kwame Ampidu passes on. Ashanti flood, four confirmed dead, two still missing in Monday night's flood. Okay, a draft probe committee makes 10 recommendations for government's consideration. Offensive chiefs bent on taking firm decision to curb Sakawa menace, that's according to the linguist there. Um, okay, so sex predator. Ohini Inkunim is not licensed to practice physiotherapy. That's according to Ghana Physiotherapy Association. A draft disturbances probe military used as scapegoats for political failures. Professor Inim. Um, I think that's about it um, for my journal line. Of course, you can get a lot more business, entertainment, um, and international news on myjoyonline.com. So, Isol, do you want to just quickly run us through what we can expect Yes. Today? All right. So, coming up on the AM show, we're going back to Glefe to have the conversation about they losing their homes. So, many homes along the coast are losing, are being lost to the sea because the sea is advancing and it just gets rid of their, just swallows and consumes their homes like that. There's something being done about it, but yesterday, uh, from Manuel's visit to the place, it looks like the contractor that's been tasked to do the work 
also has some challenges with the residents because they're doing some things that are not helping the situation. But yes, we'll be speaking with some engineers to get to understand what the situation actually is and what can be done immediately to avert the, the challenges that we're having. And is it just Glefe that this is happening? We've heard about Keta. Are there other communities that are affected and what is being done? Do we completely just evacuate the people from that area and um, maybe let the sea advance the way it wants to or come in sure maybe create a lagoon? I don't know. But it's a conversation we're going to be having with yeah. the engineers. And uh, then we'll also talk about the Joint Use Habitat Fair, Echo Bank Joint Use Habitat Fair. We have the third minute clinic, third and final minute clinic coming up this week, and we'll be talking to you about it. So, yes, we have that. And then AM, AM uh, business. business. And then we also have the um, Live to Lead. Live to Lead. Yes. Yeah. So that's exciting as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But up next, uh, we're bringing you sports, sports. and Uriku. I'm for four is joining us via Zoom. Zoom, in Zoom, a Zoom. Bit. The Zoom and sports. I can't wait to talk to you about the, the Real Madrid match against uh, Sheriff FC. What a match. <laughs> so, yes, we'll bring you the sports a, in a bit. It was a big surprise, right? Yeah. We'll bring you the sports in a bit. <laughs> 